So if we're going to be uh, transforming circles, we need to talk a little bit about ellipses. Here I have a unit circle, and the equation of that unit circle is x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now watch what happens uh, when I move one of these sliders. Let's start off with the h slider first. Okay. Okay, you can see when x when we have x minus 1 squared, that's changed the center of my circle. It's, it's moved my circle across. Now x minus 1 moves the circle that way. And if I increase that value or decrease that value to x negative 5, you can see it's moved all the way over there. Similar to how quadratics transform. If I move it the other way, you can see it is... Um, so x plus 5 squared, we end up in negative territory. We can do something similar with our k value here. If we get something like y minus 2 squared, you can see it moves up. Uh, that minus 2 is acting on that y, and it's moving us up. Similarly, we move back down again, and we get y plus 3 squared moves the center of our circle down there. So the center of our circle at the moment is negative 3.2, negative 3. The center of our circle right now is positive 2.7, um, negative 0.5. All right, so there's our little center, and you can see it changing as we move up and down. And I've just added a little more to my formula here. I still have a h value there. I've moved to negative 3. I still have a k value here of negative 1. But I've also put some denominators here, a and b. Um, you can't, they're not written a and b at the moment, but trust me, that's the a value and that's the b value. Now, what's going to happen if I change my a value here? All right, and you can see I've got 3 squared, so that, that's 9. But if I've got a denominator of 9 on that fraction, I'm going to have a, a radius of my ellipse across the uh, parallel to the x-axis of 3. And similarly, if I change my b value, which is this number here, I'm going to have a, uh, that's 4 squared, which is 16, but I'm going to get a radius of 4 here. All right, so now we can really sort of um, take this ellipse and we can generalize an ellipse formula. So here is a general ellipse formula. x minus h squared over a squared plus x minus a squared over b squared equals 1. Uh, and we can say that this point here is point h, k. And you can see if, we've, if we're saying a general form is negative h, negative k, if that said like plus 3, that would mean that our h value would be negative 3. If that said negative 3, it would mean our h value is positive 3. It's kind of the opposite of what you expect. Now this h value here, it's going to uh, represent the uh, horizontal length from there to there. So that's our a value. Uh, now note that if it said 9 here, the, the distance wouldn't be 9, it would be 3. It would be the square root of that number. And then this value here, so that's our a value. And then this value here will be our b value. And again, that squared square root sign it still, um, it still matters. So uh, now we're just going to try a question where we say sketch a, an ellipse. So here's my example here, and this is the thing that we're going to sketch. I'll just move this question up here a little bit, and we'll get to work. All right, so what do we know about this ellipse? And I'm going to draw a really rough sketch of it, and then we're going to neaten it up. So I've got my Cartesian plane like this. I have x minus 2. So minus 2 is the h value. Um, that needs to be positive 2. So 1, 2 over here. Um, and this plus 3, that's going to be my y value, except in reverse. So it's going to be uh, 1, 2, 3 down here. So the center of my ellipse is uh, 2, negative 3. Now, what about my values, my extreme values? So the 9 represents how far across it uh, stretches. And that is um, not 9, but the square root of 9, which is 3. So just draw that in there. So that means that it's going to be 3 across, 1, 2, 3 across. And that point is 5, negative 3. And 3 across, 1, 2, 
3, and that point is uh, negative 1, negative 3. All right, so that and that, it's going to pass through those two points. What about this next thing here, 25? The square root of 25 is 5, which means that that's how far up it's going to go. So I'll just go up by 5, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5. Uh, so that point there is 2, um, 2, and I need to go down 5, and that point will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that would be uh, 2, negative 8. And now what I have is an ellipse, and I'll draw a rough sketch of that ellipse right now, or a really rough sketch of that ellipse. That is a terrible ellipse. Now, I haven't done everything yet because if you're sketching relations and you see it pass through the x-axis or the y-axis, you'd really want to know what those points are. So now I want to find my x-intercepts and I want to find my y-intercepts. And this is the same no matter what you're doing. So I'm going to find, I might do my working here. I'm going to find my x-intercept. And I'm going to find my x-intercept by letting y equal 0. It never really changes. That's how you always do it. Um, so if I let y equal 0, I'll get x minus 2 squared over 9 plus 0 plus 3 squared over 25 equals 1. Okay, so and now I just sort of set to work here. Uh, x minus 2 squared over 9 plus 3 squared, which is 9. 3 squared, which is 9, so 9 over 25 equals 1. Um, oh, man, I picked some ugly numbers here. So my next step here is to take this 9 over 25 and just shift it over here as 1 minus 9 over 25. 1 minus 9 over 25, uh, that's going to be like 16 over 25. And x minus 2 squared over 9 is what I'm left with. Uh, from here, I can multiply by 9. So 16 times 9, 160, 144 over 25. And I get x minus 2 squared. Now I can square root both sides. And I'll get x minus 2 equals uh, the square root of 144 over 25, which nicely ends up being uh, 12 over 5. Now we need to be careful here because it's not just 12 over 5. It's plus or minus 12 over 5. Now I'm left with x minus 2 um, and so then I can add 2 to both sides. So I can say that x is 2 plus 12 over 5 or 2 minus 12 over 5. And they're fairly neat numbers. Uh, x equals 4.4 and negative 0 0.4. And it looks pretty good. Uh, that's So that number there is 4.4. And this drawing is obviously a little bit wrong. It needs to go over here a little bit. It needs to end up out there. Because it needs to be negative 0 0.4. And those are my two x-intercepts for my ellipse. Now, what about my y-intercepts? Well, same process. I've got a little jump start on the process. Find y-intercept, let x equal 0, sub x equals 0 in there. Go, 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 go. I've got y plus 3 squared over 25 equals 5 over 9. Um, now, if I multiply 5 by 25, I'll get 125 over 9, which will give me y plus 3 squared. And uh, I get a little bit of a problem here because I end up at y plus 3 uh, and I square root 125 over 9. Now that's not going to give me something neat there. I can probably do like some work with thirds to make it a little bit neat, um, which I might do. So the square root of 9 is 3, so I can do that in the bottom. If I simplify root 125, I can write it as 5 root 5. Uh, and then we can just put a little plus minus out the front here. 
And the final step is just y equals negative 3 plus or minus 5 root 5 over 3. Now that's a little bit difficult to comprehend. Uh, so it's probably a good idea to type it into a calculator, get some decimal answers. And there's my two decimal answers here, y equals 0 0.73. Uh, so that's sort of there-ish. And negative 6.73 is sort of maybe there-ish. Uh, now I've sort of done all of that. Now I told you this was a rough sketch in the beginning. It's really up to, up to us now to draw something much much nicer than that so i've done my best i've zoomed in i've sort of drawn something that looks like it's going to end up being my ellipse these are my extremes uh these are my intercepts in blue and now i'm gonna to have to try to draw an ellipse all right so i will admit i cheated a little bit i used the ellipse tool on one note and i got something that looked pretty sharp looked a little bit better than that there uh, but those that is our crash course in ellipses and now we're going to be able to use those to transform functions, transform relations. These are not functions.